Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today, we're going to begin a two-part series where we cover 10 tips to improve your use of a slicer in 3D printing. Now, originally, I was going to do just a single video, but after looking at the scope of the material, it was obvious that I needed more than one video. In fact, each of these individual tips could be a video on its own. But we're going to compress it a bit, move through the material quickly, so you can get a picture of the overall scope of some of the things you can do with a slicer. Let's look very quickly at the topics we're going to cover. The first is that speed kills. We're going to cover temperature. Many people don't effectively use the preview mode of their slicer. We're going to talk about that. Wall printing order can make a dramatic impact on the speed of your prints, the time to complete a print, and then we're going to talk about printing strong prints in the first of the two-part series. We're going to continue in part two, which will be a week or so from now, talking about extruder multipliers, retraction. More retraction is not always better. Z-hop and combing in order to print beautiful, beautiful prints vase mode, when to use it, when not to use it, and the fact that supports are not all and nothing anymore. In all of the major slicers, you have the ability to modify how you use supports in a number of different ways. So stay tuned, and let's learn something together. As the song from The Sound of Music goes, we're going to start in the beginning because it's a very good place to start. So tip number one is all about speed. Speed doesn't just impact how long it takes a print to complete. It doesn't just impact quality. In fact, speed impacts success. If your speed is too high, your print will fail. The first thing you'll see fail is if your speed is too high, your print will not stick to the print bed. If your speed is too high, bridges will fail. Overhangs will fail. So slow it down until you're sure you can successfully complete a print. Let's start by looking in Cura at how you do that. In Cura, you'll see when it first comes up on the screen, there's no option for speed. In order to set the speed, you need to click on Custom and go into Custom Mode. Then click on speed, and you can set the speed in millimeters per second. Uh, this was from a prior print where I was playing around. Generally, the default is 60. Now, anytime you set a number that's higher than the default, if you click on the little back arrow here, it will go back to the default. Now, the only speed option that I see here is the speed option for overall speed. What if I want to slow down just the speed for the first layer? Well, then I need to go to this hamburger menu here and switch from advanced mode. We're going to go all the way to expert mode. And now you'll see I can individually set the speed of various areas of my print. And an area that you will often, often want to um, slow down is potentially top and bottom and most importantly, initial layer. So you'll see here the default is that the initial layer speed in Cura is half of the overall speed. That's a good place to start. Now let's look at the same thing in Prusa Slicer. In Prusa Slicer, we have the same challenge. When you first look at the screen, there is no option for speed. Once again, we are going to need to go to Advanced and then to Print Settings. And you'll see here that there's an option here on the right left for Speed. If I go back to Simple Mode, that option disappears. In Prusa, the equivalent of the overall speed is Perimeters. It's not quite the same, but it's close. You'll see that many of the other values are percentages of perimeters. And there is a, what they call a modifier at the bottom. And uh, we're going to want to set that, once again, to about half of the overall speed. Now, if you click into Expert Mode, 
you do have more advanced parameters related to acceleration and jerk control. Another video completely. So the first tip is slow it down. Tip number two, temperature is going to impact both quality and speed. The faster you try to push your printer, the higher the temperature needs to be. And the reason is the faster you're printing, the less time the hot end has to melt the plastic before it's extruded from the nozzle. I generally print at a little bit higher temperatures than the factory manufacturer recommended temperatures. The disadvantage of printing at too high of a temperature is you get more stringing. So you're going to want to balance extrusion. Higher temperatures will allow the flow of the filament to work better and stringing. Those are the two values you want to balance. If we go back to Cura, we'll see that that's listed in the Material tab. And depending on the mode you're in, if we go back to Basic Mode, you'll see there's only an overall temperature for the material and for the build plate. And I generally always print with a build plate of 60 degrees Celsius or higher, even when I'm printing PLA, which theoretically can be printed without heating up the build plate at all. If I go to the hamburger menu, and let's say I go to advanced or expert, you'll see I have more control over uh, print temperatures. So temperature is tip number two. Now for tip number three, we're going to look at preview mode. So we're going to slice this model and see what preview mode can be used to teach you. So we're slicing the model now. We're in Cura in this particular case. In Cura, you can print, click on preview here or preview here. Now the slider on the right determines which layer of the model you're going to be looking at. The slider on the bottom will actually show you how the print head will print that individual layer. We're going to zoom in a bit here. And let's move this up a bit and go down a little bit on the layers. And now here you can actually see the number of layers that we're getting in our wall. So we have our infill here. We have two layers, an outer layer and an inner layer. If we change the number of walls, which is the way you set the external perimeters in Cura, so we're going to go to Shell. Let's make the wall thickness two millimeters. Let's slice our model. And you'll see here now that we still have a single red external wall, but then we have one, two, three, four internal walls. So you can use this to check how your print is actually going to uh, print. In addition, many of the parameters in your slicer will change how individual features are printed. So you'll notice here in the middle that for these features, one wall is being drawn and then it goes to the opposite feature. It keeps moving back and forth. I like to use preview mode first to make sure the print is going to print the way I think it's going to print. Because as an example, depending on whether you set top layers or bottom layers and thickness, you will get different results. So learn to use preview mode. Um, all of the other slicers also have an equivalent preview mode. Generally, after you slice, you have an option to look at a model in preview mode. And here we're looking at preview mode in the Prusa slicer. 
And finally, we're going to look uh, at preview mode. You click on prepare to print. We can look here at preview mode in Simplify 3D. Okay, so that's hint number three. Hint number four, wall order matters. Now, I showed you a moment ago in Cura that it was on the circles in the middle, it was printing one wall of the circle, then going to the next circle, then coming back. Let's look at how this prints in Simplify 3D. In Simplify 3D, we'll notice it completely finishes. See here? Completely finishes one circle before it goes to the next. So the amount of travel you'll have is less because instead of doing a particular wall feature, one of the walls, let's say there's one external wall and three internal walls, one of the walls, then going to the next wall feature and coming back again, it completes a wall feature before going to the next. Now I'm not sure why Cure's default is to do it that way. There is a way to turn this capability on in Cura. And the way you do that is you first of all make sure you're in expert mode. You then go to Shell and you scroll down and you'll see there's an option here for Optimize Wall Printing Order. When you select Optimize Wall Printing Order, Cura will print each external wall completely before it goes to the next object or the next section of wall. The advantage of that is it prints faster, and I'm not aware of any disadvantage. Finally, for tip number five, let's look at the impact of infill and walls or perimeters on the strength of your model. Perhaps you're concerned about a toddler stepping on this train and crushing it, or you're making a bracket that you might be pulling apart the strength of an object needs to be implemented perhaps differently depending on whether you're looking at crushing it or pulling it or bending it because all three create different forces. So we're going to begin by looking at infill and the different types of infill. And we'll begin by looking at all of this in Cura, but the concepts are the same in all three slicers we've been looking at today. Okay, we have Cura here, and we're going to be looking at it in preview mode. We've zoomed in quite a bit. The yellow is our fill. The green and the red are walls. The blue is support, that is helping to support the model while it's being printed, depending on what our support settings are. In fact, let's turn supports off quickly here um, so that uh, that makes it easier to look at our model. So we're going to go to supports and we're going to turn off supports here and re-slice. Okay, now we have our model without supports. Now, the shape and the density of this fill area is controlled by settings in your slicer. So if I go to infill here, I can say instead of a 30% infill, I want a 10% infill. I can slice my model. And we'll see these supports are now significantly less dense. The more plastic you print, the denser your support, the more walls you print, the slower your print is the more time it takes to complete. So you want to balance the amount of plastic you put into your model and print time. You want the least amount of plastic for the most amount of strength. Now one way you make your object stronger is you change the infill pattern. So this infill pattern you can see from the cross shape will be very good about trying to crush this model pushing down on, or perhaps less good from the sides. However, we can change the infill from a grid to cubic and re-slice. 
And now this infill pattern, it's hard to see in this picture, but if we scroll up the model, we'll see it reverses back and forth, is actually a three-dimensional fill. Cubic is a three-dimensional fill. Because it's a three-dimensional fill, it will support the model this way and this way, both ways. So it's a more advanced fill. It requires more complex algorithms. The slicers are just beginning to add three-dimensional fills. Now, that infill will help about crushing, and it will have some impact about pulling it apart or bending. But in fact, there's been very, very good work done on analyzing the best way to make your product stronger if you're concerned about bending and pulling. Stefan over at CNC Kitchen does excellent, excellent detailed studies of the technicalities of 3D printing. His skills are enormous. And one of the things he studied is the impact of fill on strength versus walls. So if we look at preview mode, these are the walls and this is the fill. If you want to make this stronger, do you put more walls or more fill? In general, historically, people have increased the fill, thinking that if there's more plastic, it's stronger. But when you study how objects are used and the directions of the forces, it ends up that walls may have a better impact. So his recommendation generally is to use three to four perimeter walls. In the case of Cura, that means you have to take your nozzle size and divide it into your wall size to determine how many walls it's going to produce. So if you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and you set the um, wall size and you set the wall size to 1.2, you're going to get three walls. If you set it to 1.6, you're going to get four walls. Now, when I looked at his study, I thought that the strongest parts, based on the data he presented, were six walls, believe it or not, yes, six walls, and only a 20 to 30% infill. So if you want to print strong parts, don't just keep cranking up the infill. That takes a lot of time. Instead, look at a balance between number of walls and infill. How do you look at that balance? Well, one way to do it is to look at print time. So increase the number of walls to three, four, five, or even six, and then start cranking up your infill, but you probably don't need to go above 30%. Okay, folks, I hope that these segments were helpful. Uh, come back in a, in a week or so or subscribe to the channel and click the bell and you'll be notified when part two is available. Thanks so much. Let's continue to learn things together.